look out. How good was that? Footy, at least the home and away season, was back. Because now it's over. G'day, I'm Danny Southern. Wait, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm actually, I haven't gone bald just yet. I am well on my way, though. Don't worry about that. I am James Clements. This is the live AFL Today show following the culmination of the home and away season for 2024. Round 24 is done. And I am joined for this live show by a couple of local dinguses. Some would all say they're footy nuffs. AFL experts, some would call them, probably just their mums. Alex Donnelly over there. What's up, Jim? Trying to figure out uh, when these finals are going to be played because it is all over the joint at the moment. All right, get on the schnitz, David Zeta. Yep. Uh, what about Leo in the middle? Social guy Leo. Let's out. get up and about, lads. We're all in finals here. Even Gerald behind the camera. His team's in finals. How good? Couldn't be me. Was never in doubt. <laughs> the Blues are always going to make it. I was cruising through that final game. It was all game. part of the plan. We live streamed the entire thing as well, and I was cool as a cucumber. They call me... Jim Cool. Uh, but either way, joining me for this insane show, look, we've got Stats Boy uh, calling in from Tassie because we sent him yep. down there to cover that horrible game. Uh, but we're going to break down every single game from round 24. We'll probably fly through them <laughs> because now it's all sort of done. Yep. We sort of get to, uh, like, there was some shocking we games. We can literally fly through the games till today. Shocking games through the weekend until today's games, which are awesome. Uh, but we do have finals, which are set now, which is very cool. Yep. The best part is we've all got teams in it. Couldn't be us, could have gentlemen, could it be? Who would have thought? Certainly not, not Jim. <laughs> it was never a problem. Hey, we, were Jack, in, we were all in five. <laughs> when Jack Higgins, one and six. When Jack Higgins kicked that goal, come on, man. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and get around all the social network gear for the AFL Today Show. It is Aussie Rules Today on the old facey. Yeah. The cool thing is, for the final time this home and away season, footy's back. Let's do a quick look at the round. That was. Well... Our finals are set. That's what happened in the round. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Because we went into this round, gentlemen, not knowing what was going to happen, right? Yep. We didn't know what was going to happen. We knew that the Swans were probably going to be in first unless a chaotic swing where they lost by over 100 and Port won by more than 100, yep. right? So that didn't happen. But Brisbane were going to be fifth, provided they, they were, didn't lose to Essendon. But if they didn't lose, if they had lost to Essendon, Western Bulldogs could, still could have skipped yeah. over them. So it was chaos from top to bottom. Uh the weirdest part, I think, from the weekend was the embarrassing results. As in yeah. how sort of every game until today would genuinely look like preseason. The yeah, Essendon-Brisbane game had a bit of brouhaha to it at some point, but in the most part it was like bruise free footy. Adelaide like, and Sydney was completely bruise free Exactly, mm. So, which you get. But at the same time, my biggest thing in Jim Cool, that's right. We are live, so yeah. we've got live comments rolling in, which is great. But – the entire point of this was sort of you get to this moment of the season and you're like, oh, this is what it's all for. It's for all the bickies. Let's go. And I really regret not wagering more on it. Like, what yeah. are we doing? How do we not look at this North Hawth game and just go, Hawthorne are going to win by a hunt. Like, what are we doing? They're going to turn up. It's going to be awesome. I'd, and just, like, load up on all the goal scorers. I completely missed the I'd, boat on I it. had something on West Coast, uh, Geelong to win by 60-plus. Well, we both did. We, yeah. we both had quite a large multi floating around. Yeah. That happened in the first quarter. Our man Suva really did yeah. help us out. Yeah, that didn't help. North played until the second goal, says Scrubber. Yeah. Uh, but other little bits of news. So with the finals are set, we'll get to that in the ladder check. But Cozzy Pickett got done again for another head-high shot. Yep. Uh, just don't leave your feet ever again, right? Or choose not to bump. Maybe. Stop, bu- stop trying to yeah. bump dudes. Don't use your shoulders, Cozzy. What are you doing, mate? You've got arms. Use them. Uh, we had a bottle thrown at an umpire in a very, very, very dangerous and extremely stupid yep. uh, It was vile. Vile is a good word. Uh, yeah, you throw stuff at umpires or at anybody, you should just be banned for yep. life. Yep. Sucked in. You just don't get to go to the footy. If you can't – look, I was at moments today angry, distressed, joyous, amazed – Sad and like ran the gamut, ran the not once did I go ah, and start throwing stuff at you guys, did I? Yeah. No, not once. Well, not yet. Well, there's still time. <laughs> uh, I was sitting there with my two small children and wife at the house, just fuming. <laughs> so, not a great vibe, but still, yeah. I didn't throw anything at anybody. And if you do, you should be banned for life. Apparently you don't get to go to footy if you can't like participate in civilized society, I reckon. Apparently, it was a St Kilda fan. What's the source? That's the latest vibe. What, well, yeah. Check your sources. Yeah, Who man. knows? This Trust is the me, thing. Bro. I think everybody's sort of throwing this out there and Twitter is very, very rife with, oh, I heard from like Alex's brother's uncle's dog 
that it was like a St Kilda fan, but they threw it at a Carlton fan and missed and hit the umpire. And you're like, that yeah. is the worst throw and ever. And Alex, Alex also saw Miss Krabappel and Principal Skinner in the cupboard making a baby, and then the baby's head popped out and the baby smiled at The you. baby also waved at yeah, me. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. Spoiler alert, it wasn't a Don supporter. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, oh. Outside of that, Alex wanted to say that results sh- like this weekend show why we don't need a wild card round. I still say we do. No, nah, no wild card round needed. Oh, uh, Liam Jones probably going to get suspended as well for yeah. a sling tackle. So the wrestling tackle for Lockie, uh, Liam Jones, yeah. there was also missing Lockie Ash today for GWS. Because he did it last week. He did yep. it last week. That was like a massive kick in the guts Yep. Uh, for those guys. But anyway, look. A crazy, crazy end of this one. The Blues sneak in. They fall backwards into the finals, which I don't feel great about. Uh, but I believe, as we do this letter check, we have an awesome final series set up. Should we do it? Yep. Let's do it. What is he writing? I'm putting out on Twitter that we're live on YouTube. Okay, good. <laughs> Should be live on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, let's do it. It's time for the round 24. This is the last run for the year. Ladder check, check, check. Hey, you might have heard, I don't know, he yelled about it all season, but there was a pretty good team up in Sydney, Leo. Best team in 149 years. years. 150 years, I reckon. Best team. There's no way they could lose before the grand final. Not to be confused with the best team ever being Essendon. The best team we've ever seen is Essendon, but the best team in 150 years is this Sydney Swans team. Ah. Gotcha. So there's no way that the Sydney Swans are going to lose before the grand final this year. Nope, we don't lose finals at the SCG. So they finished 17 and 6, six uh, which is very cool, very nice. Yep. Uh, Port Adelaide, sure up second spot with their win today at 15. Uh, I've just updated it. 16 and 7, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, standalone second spot, which is very cool. Good on them. Crazy. Obviously, Sydney, look, as we go through this later check, Sydney, incredible year. Started off like absolute gangbusters. A little bit of a diversion got, in the back Got to round 13. Like, uh, we're first. What are, what are we going to do for the next six weeks? We're never losing again. And then they lost a bunch. Uh, <laughs> they were fine. Port, they were dead in the water. We were at gather round. Yeah. That was chaos. No, they They were awesome. It, they, yeah. were, they looked awesome. And then it completely fell out from under them after that. They're firing Ken three weeks later. Three weeks later, Ken's gone. Smash cut. They're second on the ladder. And Ken's Not crying. Bad. Ken's just out there having a cry. He was angry as well at some of the calls on the field today. But anyway, in third, the Geelong Cats having to travel to Adelaide for a uh, qualifying final, which is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they talk about like just years that are wildly crazy, right? Mm. The rest of this top four outside of Sydney, Port Geelong GWS. Geelong, dead and buried halfway through the season as well. It's like, oh, they can't win at all. They're cooked, mate. They can't win. And then GWS with the exact same thing. I yeah. came out just after five or six rounds. I'm like, they're the best team. They're right in front of us. Boom, what are we doing? And then it completely fell out. Then they turn around and beat Carlton so round 17. It, it goes to show that banking wins early. Very important. Because this top four was the top four after round five or six, I believe. Sure. I don't know if Carlton and Essendon and Collingwood agree with that because they were all top four at once. Yeah, day. but they they didn't bank. Like Collingwood went zero and Collingwood three to start the it. season. Essendon were yeah. one and two or two and one. Like... And Carlton were a little bit shaky to start their season as well. Whereas Swans, Port, Geelong, GWS went bang, bang, bang to start their season. They had all, all had one loss by around seven. I think Geelong were the last team to lose. Yep. Getting six or seven wins straight away. Set you up. And GWS, like that's the other sort of thing there, right? Like they end up fourth just via, like losing today cost them essentially second spot on the ladder. I think their percentage ends up dropping down below yeah. both Port and well, got- uh, the Cats. But they could have been standalone third. They end up in fourth. They lose. Bit of a tough one. You're in Ballarat. They rested a couple of dudes or at least had a couple of guys out. But you get it on the big jobs. Brisbane finished fifth and will host. <laughs> they, they, blew it. they blew a top four spot. They did. Losing to Collingwood the way they did yep. at the yep. G basically cost them top and four. And GWS. Not great. Not great Lions. Western Bulldogs in fifth. Six. Six. That's it. Six. <laughs> 14 and nine. And Hawthorne in 14, uh, 14 and nine in seventh. That is an extremely cool <laughs> elimination final. Yeah. So uh, we've got Scrubbo saying Stats Boy does not want to talk about the first five rounds. I'll <laughs> move on. I'll pay that. He wants to talk about the first two rounds of 2023, though. Sure. <laughs> no one better. Who's got it better than us? And then, of course, the greatest team of all, Carlton. Yes, and then, oh. <laughs> 13 and 10. Rounding out the eight in a ridiculous, ridiculous fashion uh, by losing by two points to St Kilda today 
and then Frio not being able to get the job done against Port at home, which actually knocks Frio all the way down to 10th. Collingwood finish in 9th, 12-9 and 2. Frio in 10th, 12-10 and 1. The Essendon Bomb Race. Oh, but they showed some fight, didn't they, against Brisbane. They have a percentage of 93.5. It's <laughs> that pathetic. is yuck. Brutal. God, they're pathetic. 11, 11, and 1. Saints, 11 and 12 in 12th. Uh, Gold Coast, 11 and 12 as well. My good mate, Nen Moyle. Look, Look, most wins ever for Gold Coast. They finished off on a high. They won the Dimmer Bowl. I'm very proud of you, Ned and Co. That's excellent. Love you, Ned. Uh, Melbourne, 11 and 12. Probably the biggest disappointment yeah, of Melbourne the season. Melbourne, 14th. They've got 14th. Pick five. It's pretty crazy. Adelaide, 8. 14-1. and one. If you want actual disappointments, we knew that Adelaide were going to be flaky, but we sort of anticipated that Melbourne would still be just good. Uh, good. Not Stats me. guy I had Adelaide top four. four. Top four. I had Melbourne missing the finals at the start of the year. Good. And they did. Yeah. <laughs> no. Anyway. That's what West, we do. 16th West Coast, 5-18. and 18, North, 3-20. and 20, And Richmond, 2-21. and 21, They send off likely, what is it, eight remaining players from their final yeah. premiership team. Camden McIntosh is uncontracted as well. That's crazy. Especially, I think even more crazy is the Camden McIntosh, an 1850s coal miner, is yeah. playing actual AFL football still, yeah. which is ridiculous. Uh, Alex, please profess your love and admiration for the Saints, says Jonesy. He can blow it out his nose. <laughs> we don't need any Saints fans in the I chat. I need Tom here. Clark to join the chat just to start rubbing it I don't know. Gym. Saints fans were very up and about, and it's like, yeah, congrats on 12th. We're in the final yeah. sucked in. <laughs> don't know what to tell you. Don't know if you were saying that a couple of hours ago. <laughs> yeah. I'll say I was uh, never in doubt, never in doubt. <laughs> As I said, cool gym. Uh <laughs> There you go. So with the eight, obviously fleshed out and done and locked away, your AFL finals of 2024, week one, will be the Sydney Swans taking on the GWS Giants, the Port Adelaide Power. They've got the power to win. Come on, Port Adelaide aggression. You're a new member for Port Adelaide. I am a new member. Yeah, he has to buy it now. God, that's going to – anyway. Surely you you can buy a Melbourne Melbourne one, like a Melbourne membership. So Port take on Geelong. We have Brisbane hosting Carlton, and we have the Western Bulldogs hosting hosting the Hawthorne Hawks at the what MCG. Should they play that at Marvel, Alex? Yes. No. No. Absolutely not. Finals should be at the MCG. Yeah, Why? absolutely. Why build Marvel if you're not going to have finals there? Because you need another ground in Melbourne. Why? You're not going to play finals. Because then you're not going to have the right scheduling. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the scheduling. The MCG is... No, a- I'm just, I'm no, just no, like, no, but if no, you don't no. have a second ground, How's then... This go? <laughs> It's AFL Finals bingo. Why aren't they playing at Marvel? Yeah. Why are we doing it all at the MCG? VFL bias. They should have gather bias. round actually for the first week of finals. Yeah, we should have gather round yeah. just at the Marvel and the MCG. No, nah, do it in cans. <laughs> all right. So final, finals first read. Yeah. First read of the finals. Swans versus Giants. What are we looking at here? It's a battle of the bridge. Yep. A Sydney derby. Alex, you're the Swans fan. <laughs> Swans have won the last three against the Giants, but have never beaten GWS in a final. That One of the worst Sydney performances I've ever seen was at the SCG against GWS in an elimination final 2017, I think it was. Might have been a semi, whatever. Uh, I would still suggest the recency, how the Swans have played against GWS, that the Swans will win in an absolute ripper. But it's GWS in finals. They could just turn up. Jesse Hogan kick eight. He's yep. in that, that form at the moment. How do your backline feel against that team? Against Jesse Hogan. They're the third best defense in the league. I'm not that concerned. Port v. Cats. Uh, We were talking this one out earlier on the live stream while the Port Frio game was happening. Uh, They do have history, these two. There's no love lost. It's like, of course there isn't. They're right. Like, there's no love between any. No love between us. It's the dumbest thing in the world. No, there's plenty of love. So the last (laughs) last two finals that Geelong have played at the Adelaide Oval, uh, Port Adelaide have belted them. There really? Yep. Port Adelaide are the only team to have beaten Adelaide, uh, Geelong there in the last couple of years. I'm calling it Radigalia to kick four. Nice. Radigalia bowl. <laughs> Finally, revenge! Uh, Brisbane versus the Flaggers. Uh, Brisbane win by about 70. Yeah, it's a prelim. I don't know about that. Prelim repeat from last year where they just, ha- like, there was a moment in the second quarter, I want to say, last year, where it's like, hang on, wait a minute, are we, are we on here? Oh. <laughs> it was like a very brief fleeting yeah. moment. And they kicked our heads in. It wasn't a massive, like, absolute belt down, but, yeah, mm. they just handled it. As a, as a quick aside, so it's the fourth Sydney Derby final ever. There has only been one other, like, Derby showdown ever in finals. So there's been one ever between the other two states. This is the fourth between Sydney and GWS. And how long have been GWS been around for? Like, 
12 years. Interesting. Mm. Wasn't Kenna Bomber Thompson assistant? Ooh. Mm. Might have been. Uh, yeah, Carlton ended up losing that one by 16 last year, actually. Yeah. So 79, 60, but they just sort of handled them, right? It was yeah. just like, ah, uh, uh, and they sort of came back and you're like, I believe, and then I just didn't. Yeah. So, tough one. I think no team benefits more from the two weeks off than Carlton yep. Uh, yep. to get their dudes back. I think the Swans also benefit as well with Oh, Pavlin. really? Did, is Alex got some vibes and why the no, no, Swans no. might benefit for a bit of time? No, but the thing is, so they were like, I think the Swans are in the driver's seat anyway because yeah. they do, all they have to do is like, they get that extra week. They could have taken a week off this week. A horse doesn't do that. We get it. Yep. They get the week off. They've got some sore bodies, but I think most teams are going to have sore bodies. You don't have a 17, have, 18 yeah. player deep. We don't, have 11, we don't have 11 players out. So, mm. Especially with those dudes who are like on those one to two injuries, like as we saw Charlie, ha- Harry Mackay, et cetera. So it's your if, three tools. And if we get TDK back, who knows? But McGovern, maybe getting him another week, it's massive. So they could have some huge ins, whatever. They're still probably going to get their heads kicked in by Brisbane, who looked Board. They're just very and inaccurate. Smashing they just very they're, inaccurate. They've got they've gotten to the finals like, okay, we're, we're, we're gonna make finals, just let's just get to that point. Good. And then finally, a really, really, really awesome elimination final. It'll be the MCG. It's the be Western great. Bulldogs taking the Hawthorne Hawks. It's a big one for the uh, Hawks. I love this. It's an away game at their house. How good. I guess the Marvel team that's played six games of the G in three years. What? Sucked in. That's awesome. Sucked in. That's unreal. That's what I'm saying. Why is this not at Marvel? Uh, or Ballarat, to be honest. <laughs> send them, oh, up, the, send them up the road. 10,000 packed into the North Ballarat Stadium, Mars Stadium. Tins on the hill. We're smashing beam cans. It'll be great. Chips, gravy, all the cheese you want. From gravy spot late night. We're going to 21 arms after. That's not open anymore, Jim. Shush. <laughs> um, it really is a shame that one of the dogs and hawks get eliminated. I mean. But as as... Fans of other teams in the competition, love it. Because that could I easily <laughs> yeah. could easily be a gun final if yeah. they were like love it. Just split a little bit more. Yeah. Uh but there you go. So Hawks Western Bulldogs are shaping up as an awesome one. Brisbane flag is hilarious because it's a prelim from last year. Port Cats, plenty of history there. And a Sydney Derby. This is an awesome first round. What, what one are, are you about? most looking forward to? Uh pro- Probably dogs. Not, not Carlton. Yeah. No, I don't, I'm going to watch Carlton just get absolutely their heads. I'm beaten. probably Haw- I'm probably Hawks and Dogs too, just because I think it's going to be an exciting. I game. I think that game could be sick. Yeah. So like this could be one of those finals. It's like 110 to 100. Like that. AFL Marbles. Let's f and go the up the Blues. I mean, I've been singing. The lads <laughs> says Marcus. Yeah. Who wins the Brownlow now? The home and away season. Marcus, that's literally all of our shows in the Stop week. getting Shut ahead up. of our content. Why are you <laughs> looking at the content alert. plan? Stop looking at the content plan. Anyway, uh. so that's the finals first read. We have four amazing, amazing games to open up this finals campaign. I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be like we're an AFL exit with the most exciting thing. All right. Before we start, to, we've got two weeks to talk about those games. Yeah. Let's give round 24 its due. Before we do that, Vincent. Hey, Alex. Yep. Should we play AFL bingo again? Okay. Are we going to go umpires, commentators, <laughs> open the roof? Like, what do you reckon? Yeah. Um, couldn't cool. open the roof today. That would have been horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone might have died. But either way, <laughs> the commentators this week, it felt particularly yeah. lost horrible, as the French and Spanish might be oh. to say. It felt like they were as bored as us watching it. And this is one of my absolute bugbears. If you're not excited to commentate a game, if you're not excited about explaining the game, why would anyone care? In mm-hmm. fairness, Hutto was having a bunch of fun in the Hawthorne and North game. Him, Bucks, and John O'Brien were just cracking jokes. Happy. I was like, it is fun. It is great. Lighthearted. Then yeah. you had, uh, was it? You had Kelly and Lee Montagna Rewalk. doing the Gold Coast oh. Richmond game. It was awful. It was a punish. It was terrible. So that uh, who was on the other? I can't remember the other game. Uh, yeah, how he's a Geelong fan. He was having the greatest day of his life. And the watching Brisbane, Jazza kick goals. I think the Brisbane Essendon game was just Channel like, Seven. It was like they were just willing the Bombers to get back into it, and then they finally did. Yeah. And they were falling over themselves to say how they were going to beat the Lions, and they did. The Swan, the Swans Adelaide game had Dwayne Russell cheerleading Adelaide so hard. But, oh, oh, the Swans. You know they really need to win this to guarantee themselves a home final. It's like no, Dwayne, we need to lose by a hundred, and then Port. To win by a hundred to finish second, we've guaranteed top two. It didn't feel like he had that straight in his mind. Yeah, and he was kind of like trying to talk his way through it, like if I was doing it. Yeah, and I'm not paid to do that. Like he is. What are we doing? But 
it felt weird this weekend for commentary because even the Carlton St Kilda game, it felt like BT just cheering on the Blues, which was weird. Yeah. And I did not like mm. that. <laughs> like usually he's just like, oh, I hate that team more than anything. So, oh, I find out that he hates St Kilda more. Fantastic. <laughs> um, Who hates St Kilda more than Carlton? That was bizarre. But he was like all over it. He had a pretty good call down in the end for the Higgins goal, I yeah. think. But the Ballarat call was pretty fun, but that was more because like, you could literally hear just blokes talking in your ears yeah. from the crowd. But even then, it was still teams. pretty bad. and uh, It was pretty bad in the first quarter. And then you had a chaotic Frio poor game, which is probably the best of the lot because yep. you had Paps, you had Hutto. Hutto on it, you had Pav there, and you had uh, some Will Schofield. Equestrian commentator, Matthew Pavlich. Noted, noted equestrian commentator, Matthew, Matthew wow, Pavlich. That's, a, there was that's no, a big get for the AFL. No one was entirely sure he was going for. So Yeah. Yes. People think it was West Coast. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but ye, I'll tell you what. what, a, what Did a, you say ye? <laughs> ye. <laughs> Jim for Channel 7 commentary. Thank you, Bazano. I appreciate it. I, I, can't, I was going to say, I can't wait for Fox Footy to take over and have all the games next year, but the commentary we got this weekend, but I'm so concerned at how bad it is. We could get called up. I'm like, how are we doing? Like, we've gotten to round 24. I understand it's like the last round. This was just barn-burningly bad. You're just like, oh, I'm just going to go burn some barns because it's this bad. That's what that's, you know, turn of phrase means. But I just, I'm so confused as you, how, how you have like just – this roster, mm. and go, this is the best that we've got. How did that happen? Where was Matt Hill? Uh, he's still away. He's still, not, he's still not back. He's, I think it was J- – was it Jason Bennett was on the Saturday yeah, night? No, well, so Adam, Adam Olzanzi called the races yesterday, so Matt Hill still isn't back. He, I know he's back this Wednesday because we're interviewing him for an nice. upcoming content series. Cool. Nice. Either way, it was a Barry Crocker shocker of a weekend of commentary. Yeah. I do like, though, the uh, – Someone needs to give Tim Wayne a TV job. They do. Stephen Quartermain? Yes, heard him on Hawks Radio. Just give him the one Sandy Roberts early Saturday game on Fox from the now. The fact that he struggled to be biased on that too. Just as, yeah. long, as, <laughs> just as long as it's not Andy Marr. All, All right. right, let's do it. Let's wrap up round 24, lightning style, because yeah. there was a lot of lightning around. Well, Heaps of lightning. Yeah. Starting on Friday, there was lightning. There was a bloody lightning delay. It was sick. Why didn't they just call the game, the game off? Rap. So um, this was the weirdest part. At what point do we just have this written in the rules? Go, ah, just captain's call. I just, but but also given that it's the end of the season, Collingwood are that far in front. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, Melbourne fifty-seven, Collingwood one hundred three. Melbourne 80 touch, checked out. Eighty touches for the day guy. Yeah, uh, I think most of this game was actually spent saying trying to explain how Nick Dacos could win the Brownlow. Uh, I remained unconvinced. Yeah, I'm probably going to get top three. Probably. Yeah. So there we go. I, I, w- Cripps, I, I Cripps, w- Neil Dacos. I went and watched Deadpool instead of watching this. Ooh. Shrieky schnicky. Pretty good. Uh, what is it? It's the, it starts with Madonna, doesn't it? No. Nah, uh, yeah. Bye, bye, bye. Is it in sync? Oh, yeah. There's But there is a Madonna one. Yeah, Madonna's there, at the end. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Love the NSYNC one. Yeah. It's good. Jennifer bye, Garner bye, makes bye. an appearance. It's pretty oh, good. Oh, spoiler alert. What are you doing? It's been out for three weeks. What? I'm not going to lie. I did not hear I've already it said that I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the lightning delay kicked in and everyone, like quite literally everyone there. Which just is like, I'm just going home. <laughs> Didn't the Collingwood chant um, ring out when the light, the delay was happening? <laughs> I think so. They were just like, Coll- well, they, it was pretty, To be honest, it was pretty cool because like well, everybody sort of just pissed off home. And then the people who stayed just then all rushed to the fence. And so it was like a very close ring. Wasn't the ru- don't, don't you have to get out of the ground when there's a lightning strike? Because I was there for Easter Monday with like. I don't think you had to no, get out of it. But it's like get undercover. Cover. Yeah. So that's what they did. But then once they went back out there, it was like uh, a close ring. Okay. Uh, still, this was like. Cosy Pickett attempted murder. Yeah. It was just a gross game. Like even Gary Lyon is like Bailey Fritch, if he could get a touch. And you're like, whoa. Gary, yeah. going in. But it just, it just shows Melbourne's – like people are, oh, Melbourne have blooded a lot of young kids. You look at their list. It's There's it's still a not, lot to improve on. Nothing I have been told they have a couple of father, sons, and NGAs in the next two years that look very decent. So they've got that to hold on to, but you still need a forward. They haven't played an AFL game yet. Yeah, so. you, but you still need another forward. Lever and May, another year older. Gorn looks like he's cooked. Clary's cooked. Petrarca doesn't want to be there like this. They're not going to be in the finals again next year. They're going to be bad once again. Bottom four? Not that bad because West Coast, Richmond, and North will still be there. Hmm. Still one spot there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, but Uh, like Carlton or something could drop. Carlton! (laughs) Look at their injury list. To be honest, we could. (laughs) Uh, Collingwood, like, it was an interesting, weird one. Like, we've already talked about this game way too much. The rain delay was sick. It was very cool. They'll be better next year, Collingwood. They did find a little bit of, like, punch in their forward line, but Jake Lever didn't play, like... 
Stephen May wasn't there, like whatever. So good job by the Dacos for running rampant. How are the two fan bases feeling after this season? We're gonna oh, break oh. we're gonna break down all of these teams later on this week. We're gonna break down the ten teams who did not make the finals. But after these games, so Collingwood are like, to come well, out of this. if you gave the fifty to Dan McStay, we'd be playing finals. Oh, and that free kick when we didn't give the ball back too. How about you don't go zero and three to start your season, losers? Yeah, just go zero and five instead. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. That's, yeah, he's yeah. got a point. Leo just like <laughs> whomp, whoops it out on the table. Uh, the D's are like, thank God that's over. Demons fans are <laughs> yeah. just like, that was horrible. Yeah, that was the year. look. In basketball, it happens. You get the year from hell. Like Memphis had it last year where they just had no players. Like they were the second seed two years ago. Everybody got hurt. Ja Morant's out, comes back, gets hurt anyway. They lose all their dudes. They end up like playing, I think it was like 36 people. There's only 15 dudes on an entire basketball yeah. roster. Manchester like, United had that last year in the APL. but I don't. And think Melbourne basically kind of had that. So you kind of look at that one and go, uh, it all went wrong. Yep. Year from hell. I agree with you though, Alex, the idea of like, what is the bounce back and how? What does it look like? Next year they're, they're going to be chip, they're going to be chips in again, but it's like you still worry about the depth. Yep. They need forwards ASAP. McStay. Yep. Uh, and and check is my check will be back too. I don't know why I thought we were talking about Melbourne. They need a lockdown defender, Collingwood. Yeah, they do. Nice one. All right. Saturday, there was a game in Launceston, not Launceston. I've heard. Lanceston. Launceston. Landceston. Tasmania. Down there in Tassie, weird things happening in Tassie, 170-46. Oh. When we say weird things, we mean 124-point beltings. In the wet. In the wet. In the wet. It was raining sideways. Hawthorne beat the bejesus out Okay, of let's just get to the report and get this over and let's done Let's now with. go to our beloved little stats boy. Live. Live to tape. All right, very depressed stats guy here. Live from Launceston, absolutely filthy. The Hawks get the job done, 170 to 46. Yes, 170. They did it in the wet. It was pouring all game. They made it look like a dry game. They were unbelievable. I was more than worried about the drinks and the food. The chicken burger was definitely an eight out of 10. Uh, the lights, they were even on. Even though uh, the union was striking, I don't know what was going on there. Weird things do happen in Tassie, right, Jim? Uh, the best player on ground, I'm gonna go with Connor McDonald. I think he was unbelievable. See, Mac, 19 disposals, three goals, seven tackles. Did a bit of everything. Massimo D. Ambrosio, he's in my All-Australian team. 31 disposals, two goals. The only one that, that can hold their head high for North has to be Vintage Simpkin Performance. 25 disposals, three goals. Cherry was solid in the ruck against Meek. If I'm facing the Hawks in the finals, I think they're a bit of a smoky. They could do a dog's run from 2016. I think they're going to be very tough to face. They're up and about uh, in Launceston, and uh, North fans are not happy at all. And that was a very sad stats boy. <laughs> Look, he, he gave, was, he he gave the chicken burger an 8 yeah, out of 10. Stoked on the burger. Chicken horrible, burger. horrible team, though. But Maybe we should have a Rue burger. But what about time. the lights and this game being moved earlier in the day because of the, what was it, strike action? They didn't think they'd have any uh, lights on the ground? No hairy cheese to sh save you, Mrs. <laughs> I like that. Uh, the lights being off was weird. It was bizarre. But then they were on. They were fine. I don't know. He said, he, well, he's got Massimo on his All-Australian team, so Leo should be happy. Who does? Stats guy. He, he, he just put Massimo in his all Australian oh. team after that. Um, but also, it's Harry Sheasel without North. They are they average lo losses by over 100 I think points. I that's a stat that's in later. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> uh, two fan so Stats Boy just gave us the uh, sort of breakdown. Uh, how, how are the two fan bases feeling after this? Hawthorne are just flying, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, You're finals, just like, what the you hell? You can't believe this, can you? I You're having the best time ever. I don't know what that was. This happening. might be the best like year of Leo's life. I think it might be. And I've seen four flags. I hate you so much. <laughs> I want to throw him off a very tall building at this point. That's ridiculous. I'm so old. I've seen two in my oh, life. Oh, you just woke me I've up seen, by hitting me. Gosh. I've seen two as well. Anyway. Uh, and the Roos fans, I mean, you just heard their fan base. They're, they haven't finished above 17th for the last five years. Not pictured there with Stats Boy just crying. <laughs> but so he just he did look like a hostage. It's all right. Weird things happen in Tassie. Yeah. <laughs> we might not see him again. Uh, there was another belting as well. We, we should be flying through this. 168 75. Geelong were up by 100 down at GMHBA, down to Taxpayer Stadium. At half time. Up by 100 at half time. They, I, I, I wanted them to win by 200 because I thought that would have been funny. Oh, there we go. Port Cats I'll Thursday, Lions Blues Friday, Dogs Hawks Saturday, Arvo. Swans GWS Saturday night. Interesting. I hate that so much. Hawks started the run, not the Dogs. Please, re please refer to it as the Hawks 2008 run. Interesting. Uh, you can refer to your old Carlton history book for premierships. That's a good ground. That's a good ground to stand on. Yeah. The anyway, back to uh, Tax Bay Stadium and Geelong. Jezza was incredible. What did he kick? 
Nine. nine goals, one. Joined his hero, Joel Amati, in kicking nine goals. Nice. The highest total for the season. I had Shannon Neal for five plus in my big calls. He... I think he got three or two. So not well, Ollie Henry, like so, we talked about on Thursday. Five or six on Thursday's show. We talked about Jezza kicking like five, Shannon Neal kicking five, and Ollie Henry kicking five, and they almost did. <laughs> mm. Like that's yeah. ridiculous. I loved it. Um, the thing is, I mean, do you read into this? No, it's just a training run. Yeah, literally. So, how are the two fan bases feeling after that? Geelong, they're stoked. They're third. They're probably just more annoyed so, that they didn't get second. So Geelong's last five games, North Melbourne, Adelaide, Fremantle, St Kilda, and West Coast. Like Which They've had an easy run into the finals, and they got sure. belted by St Kilda. Also gives them a bit of a chance to get healthier. Uh, West Coast hasn't lost by 100, but Sydney have. Need he say more, says Emery. Uh, yeah. I don't think so. Let's the end their podcast. Yeah. Swans are going to smash it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, West Coast fans. They are. They've come to the realization that they are worse than what they thought they were. Whereas we've been saying all year, there's another hill to come, and they're going to be real bad. The two wins that they won, beating the three, they won. The two wins they had. It's like they had five this year. Yeah, they had five wins. It's probably a disservice to them. But to beating do that. Melbourne and beating Frio is just like what the hell happened. And both of those clubs can go. How would we? How would we lose it was to a them? Fully fit Melbourne team too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's like that Carlton league. game was like the. Carlton, like, to cop this back-to-back, the Carlton game where they've got, like, no players and then just get deleted yeah. by Geelong. It's just, like, that's a lot of uh, tough medicine to take. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Hey, Richmond played Gold Coast in a dimmer bowl. That was sweet. I and loved it. Let's move on. It was also a horrible game. Gold Coast won again away from home. 94-66. They won their one and only game at the MCG this year. Could you imagine if they beat... West Coast and North away. No, if they beat West Coast and St Kilda, they'd be playing finals. Why North? Too? And Carlton wouldn't be. Fantastic. That's why I love the Gold Coast. All right. This was the farewell to Dusty. It was very cool to see him there. Very teary at the end. I love this. Yeah. Right. It's We're good already... to see the like see that from him. So like Richmond fans go, ah, oh, he he did care. And we've already sort of said our piece about Dusty over the last like month or so, but it's still like as I said the other day, like it's epoch defining, like it's era defining. He's an era defining player, and it's just sad when that sort of like those players move on. Mm. Yeah, you know? we, we did. It's just, it just shows you how old you're getting. Like you made Jim. So it's like I'm just very old. Just why do you sound drunk? It's He's old. I'm just me. So I went back this morning and checked out our over unders episode, and we talked about Richmond. Like, oh, they could bottom out badly, and we mentioned like Dusty. They get smashed a couple of times early. Where's the interest levels? Yeah, we totally know. I it. did say preseason North would finish above Richmond. There you go. I Job. didn't think it would be seventeenth and eighteenth. I I had <laughs> Richmond winning as low as four games. I couldn't right. imagine them only winning. That's two. what we can talk about in later shows. Uh, for now, yeah. Stupid Sexy Flanders was awesome in this game. Yes, I did have him captain in Supercoach. Like nice. I said on the Supercoach well show, nailed that. I captained Dacos because I was spewing where the Dacos miss because I had Gorn instead of Dacos. Yes. Boom, um, it went massive. A good a good team as in anyone better than Richmond, would have absolutely handled Gold Coast yesterday. This game was disgustingly bad. Yeah, and then they got argy-bargy towards the end, and yeah. uh, Richmond were like, no, nah, now we're tough. It's like, it, it's the end of your season. Yeah. It was, what are you doing? So they've got to really attack the draft this year, and this year, like, really well, they're gonna clear have to, out. they're going to have to with the yeah. players going. they're not going to have any players. Yeah, though. exactly. Um, Gold Coast, 11 wins. So, like, yay. Record. Yep. But just club record. It's a bit sad. That's a yeah. Record. Still feels like a failure. I think they need to get a lot more out of uh, King because a lot of the ball went into the forward line. I know there was a lot of dumb kicks and not a lot of great entries, but he's either on or he's just completely cold. So I think a lot of Same this, with Mac Andrew. Yeah. I mean, that's they're playing away. Like, that's yes. it's always going to be the way, right? And so I think who was it who, like I said, Ben Long popped up. And like, that's kind of the fun thing with Golko sometimes where they have like that interchangeable forward line where Lukosius, Ben Long, or Ben King will pop up and kick. One of them will kick three. It usually only happens at home. The fact yeah. that Ben Long did it away was actually really cool, and that's why they won the game because every sort like they sort of solidified that in the second and third quarter and sort of ran away, like just kept them at arm's length for most of the game, and then yeah. off they went. But it's just there's still so many questions about that team and just their hardness, and I think it'll just take a year or two for Dimmer to bash their heads in, mm. and then they'll be awesome. I really like them next year, just saying, just saying. Uh Two fan bases, how are they feeling? Richmond fans are just, it's going to hurt. That yeah. It's going to hurt. But the thing is, they're going to just look at this and go, we know how much it's going to hurt. We're going to say goodbye to Rioli. We're going to say goodbye to Shea, Shea Bolton, Baker. 
Graham. Graham. It's all over. Dylan Grimes is gone. Dusty's gone. Pickett. Also, Marlon, Marlon Pickett playing the game of his life, according to commentators yesterday. Uh, it was did, a sub. Did they not see his first game? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he's the first player in the history of the AFL to win a flag with his first and a wooden spoon with his final. It's not bad. That's a great That's stat. actually a great – that should be in the – But he's also the first player to play his like first game in front of 100,000 people and, and his then, second yeah. game in front of zero. Yep. That was the one I said on Thursday. It's like you listened to Thursday's show. <laughs> I did. Anyway, the um, for the Suns, I feel like their fans are just going to be like, can we just get tougher? I just want to be tougher. Like, took Matt Rowell, it's a good start. Yeah. Well, as a Suns fan, what are you feeling after that? Well, I'm feeling just a little bit – like, there's a there's a bright future for this Suns team. Yeah. yeah. I love this Suns team. Uh, Jed Adam, Walter, my Ned good Moyle. friend Ned Moyle. <laughs> yeah. Adam awesome. Shybolt said he's overrated anyway, no loss for Tigers. Overrated because he, he's brilliant, he's good – and he's just worst, he's bottom five. Well, he's complimentary brilliant. Yeah. Right? If you've got other good players there, he adds so like Adam, a, he takes your ceiling from there to here. If he played but for if your ceiling is only here, he's still only not helping you really. So either. if he played for Fremantle today, do you reckon they get the job done? I two goals from Tracy's hit, probably two goals more. and fifteen yeah, touches Tracy, from Shea Tracy Bolton. and Bolton, maybe. Yeah. Oh, they definitely anyway. win with Tracy and Shea Bolton. All right, there you go. Brisbane Essendon. 87-67, the Lions win this one. Oh, the Bombers put up a big fight late. It was just what – this was because Brisbane sprayed it more than my five-year-old trying to take a lash. Like, it was Stop always, giving it to your five-year-old. He's just like this. I'm like, it was that the dog? He's like, no. I'm like, what the Can't hell, bro? Can't your five-year-old's redemption arc. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he's, he's good. He's fine. It's pro- I'm blaming – to be honest, it's probably the – Was it you, Jim? Might, might be, might be, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway. Uh I, this is why Brisbane won't make, run, make a deep run in finals. They'll take care of Carlton, but then they'll lose the following week because they'll kick 10 goals, 16. Flip side. <laughs> Miss it now. It doesn't matter. But, Jim, they've, Miss done, it now. they've, been, doing it, they've now. been doing it for five been years. Kick them all in the finals. No, they've, they've missed for five <laughs> years. So it's not just a one-off. <laughs> there you go. So Jim points out Carlton actually has a chance. Brisbane kicks 24 behind the game. Yeah. Not wrong. They were just shocking. And mm. they, it's happened time and time again. And uh, Carlton did actually ride a bit of luck it, like that last they've year. They've lost when they've kicked more behinds than goals, Brisbane. They've lost six games this year. Yep. Well, they did try the hardest to bottle this just because of their – they put the cue in the rack way too early. And yeah. they're like, we're still here. Mm. Let's have a go. Uh, Heppel was fantastic to, to the point where I'm like, just go back around. Just why not? Just play another year. I retired. Oh, actually, no, I want a real farewell. I game. actually think Come there's back. more value in playing Heppel than Jake Kelly, for instance, in the same <laughs> role. Jake Kelly is put in one of the worst seasons, and I don't think it's been talked about enough. Does Jake Stringer come back? No. I think he should. He's kicked 42 goals this year. Yeah, a very but, bad but, forward line. But you like, have a look at his contract. His last contract year, he kicked 41 goals. Next year was 29 20, and this year, 40. True, true. But I think it's it would be dumb of Essendon to not reward him because. No. You, if he, if you're a top two goal kicker, you've kicked over forty goals, and your forward line is a problem. You can't get rid of what is actually kicking you goals. Like, get rid of I, like honestly, yeah. Peter Wright. Like, he's not kicking. Oh, goals. I'd get rid of Peter Wright too. But the thing is, he's a guy who comes back, he's fit for the first six weeks, and then his form goes like this. So you're, you're st- not wrong. You've got a point, but I don't know. I just think he's there. He's their talent. Like forty goals. But it also year. could be a line in the sand thing. Going okay, you show glimpses, but you don't do enough consistently over the year, which is our problem in the back half of the season. Mm. They lost. Nine of their last 12 games. And we love that. Bloody hilarious. <laughs> I think the only way we're going to fix this is uh, for you guys to punch on. <laughs> oh, no, I'd die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Willie Morelli every day of the week says, Adam, not bad. Yeah. yeah I'll take fine. Bolton over Willie. Willie just got me into the finals. Da, 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 da. Uh, good game, Leo. Well played and a great show of force yesterday from ICC Jimbo. Thank you, ICC Jimbo. What did you do? No idea. Oh, he must Hawks. be a North fan, yeah. Oh, One okay. moment, Mac Andrew. Yeah. yeah, Mac Andrew rules. I love me. Some fan Mac bases, Andrew. Brisbane. Brisbane Lions are just like, can we just kick straight? That's yeah. all we need. Home That's final, need. how good's life? We're in the finals. They're going to be stoked that they play Carlton as well. Yeah. Because like, – well, even if they're playing Freo, I feel like they'd be like Freo. You'd be like, eh, especially if, if they got dogs or hawks. I think that'd you'd be, be a absolutely bit, yeah. spewing yeah. if you played. Carlton those was the one team they wanted to play for, and I was like, oh man, if Freo yeah. get Josh Tracy back and Alex Pierce, oh, we're screwed. Sean Darcy probably yeah. play again. Yeah, so that would have been brutal. That's a lot of meat coming into a team. <sighs> it's a lot of. Th- Sean sure Darcy, Alex Pierce, and <laughs> Josh Tracy. <laughs> Tell you <laughs> what, the meaty boys are. How much back. would they all weigh? Sorry, this is off topic. They'd, they'd need two. <laughs> oh, they'd be two, two. They'd have to charter two different planes this time. One with working dunnies <laughs> yeah. and one with That's actual. That's why the dunnies weren't working. Yeah, they're just two big boys. <laughs> Josh Tracy do- dropped a deuce. Sean Darcy ruined a 747. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you see this dunk? Well, yeah, All right, once. so Essendon fans are just like, oh, man, not again. Like, honestly, this is beyond a joke. Yeah. Mm. Es- there are a lot of Essendon fans in my life. 
Yeah. And yes, Daniel Brown, beef bowl. Beefy bowl. So <laughs> the Bombers fans are just looking as like, where where does this SNN edge go? Because like there was skerricks of it in the back half of this game. And you'd be so, so, so frustrated mm. as a Bombers fan week after week after week of just the inconsistent effort, the inconsistent uh, footballing nous yep. a lot yep. of the time, right? Like there's like an I, a footballing IQ that sometimes just like completely abandons this team. Carlton does it as well, right? Like yep. Carlton do it shockingly where it's like, hey, we played awesome. Let's do the exact opposite of that. Mm. You're like, what are you doing? The Bombers, I feel like the building blocks are there. Like I love the likes of Nick Martin, Cox, uh, I love Carl Langford. Zerat's Mar- obviously fantastic. Carl Langford's form was horrendous Durham. this year. Durham's unreal. Langford Caldwell's still unreal. Forty-three be goals. Fun. Really? I think so. Yeah, maybe. No. Swans that. blunted the SNN edge. Yeah, we did. Uh, anyway, Bombers fans just be like, can we get something different next year? You know, mm. Sydney Adelaide. This was a bit of a laugh. For one twenty-one ninety. This yep. one smashed the crumb. Uh-huh. Alex, take it away. Uh, Bruce free footy. This game, most of Adelaide's goals just came from the Swans being lazy in defence. Uh, Thriller was awesome. He's absolutely going to win a Coleman, but he is 27% less threatening now that he shaved the beard. Does not look as scary. All numbers approximate. Yep, exactly. Uh, Luke Parker has shown why he's really important for the Swans. Three goals, 20 touches again. Callum Mills has found form playing behind the footy once again. It was good to see the Fords actually take some marks. Marty McDonald, McLean all kicked a couple of goals. Chad Warner off a break was good. The Lizard had two and 30. It's a good problem to have for John Longmire that Heaney didn't play. You've got McCartan, Papley. He's taking this really seriously, isn't he? That's what we're about, Jim. Yeah, I've got to take something (laughs) seriously. But four dudes to come back. Good problems (laughs) to have. Uh, Funnily enough, Rory Laird comes out and says, hey, uh, Josh Rochelle needs to do the team thing first and this and that, and then proceeds to drop an all-time stinker. Had like 28 <laughs> possessions and gained 200 metres. Like, honestly. <laughs> I could do that in four. Like 20-odd 20, <laughs> 20, 20 handballs, a couple of handballs that led to goals for the Swans. Should Matthew Nix be sacked? Well, there was also just a bunch no. of like crummy Rory-led moments where yeah. he just like wasn't putting his body on the line because he's- There was one like, where he dead set shocking. ran away and looped so around. You can't, be, you can't be ragging on Rochelle if yeah. happen have that where he's just like ball watching. Uh, should Nix be sacked- why did they extend him when they were zero and three? Yeah, that was weird. But I don't think they should sack him. They need a, they just like they just need to change their whole vibe though. They don't need to change the person. Well, yeah, change the vibe. So you sack the hey, CEO. Leo, how do you change a vibe? You sack the <laughs> coach. You sack, you sack the coach. coach. No, you don't. No, what you are you don't. doing? You've got to overhaul the board as well. Because Maybe they just that. they just, just, put just ruin charge and it'll be fine. No, but that's the thing. It, they just seem you nice. Say, oh, it's got a board. She's pretty good. I can geez. get Dan Curtin in charge. He looks like he's going to be good. Put the fans. He and Thriller and just probably the, won't play a game next year. He and Thriller like the two dudes you can just sort of put a circle and go. This is why we have a future. Adelaide is a boys club. It That's totally right. looks like the, it. I would say yes. I think you can't look at this year and go eight and fourteen as a pass mark. No, it's not a pass mark. But it's also like they haven't made finals in five years. It's like this team is building and they that. keep adding yeah. stuff to it and it just keeps underperforming. Yeah. To me, that's coaching, and here we are. How are the fan base is feeling, Sydney. How good? Home final. Let's go. Adelaide, yeah. what are we doing? Yep. Treading water, another year wasted. Blech. Isaac Rankin played, what, 13 games as well? That probably doesn't help. Yeah. And Thriller is going to be unreal next oh, year. Oh, he's so good. I love Did, it. What, Tex, another year? I would say he no. He had five touches. I, you've got I, Phil Thorpe from I would, I would honestly go, hey, anyone in Melbourne, here's Tex for a third rounder. Anyone? Just take him on as a goal king coach in a way. Go, yeah. go from there. Sunday. Now, these games are actually good. The Western Bulldogs and the GWS Giants battled in yep. my hometown. California knows how to party. California yeah, knows how to party. Uh, 98 61, the Dogs win it. How did they win this one, gentlemen? By 37. Was it just by kicking away in the fourth quarter or was it just manhandling this Giants team that wouldn't really quite say die? It was winning it in the second quarter. They and won the game in the second quarter. The uh, Was it the – it was Jones who kicked that goal late. There was basically the sealer, wasn't it? It was yeah. sort of put them back up uh, more than a couple of kicks and you're like, yeah. okay, they've got this one now. Hogan only had the two. Uh, Jamara didn't bother the scorers because he was sort of just – Floating around further up, which is pretty interesting. They got Norton involved a little it's a bit, bit more. It's a tougher day for the key forwards. Exactly. Well. It was always going to be tough. So uh, they just gave him the old one of these. The We're tougher than you. Uh, so d- We're sh- tougher than you. They out-toughed GWS. They didn't look like they're going too early. And then that second quarter, they kicked six goals. It was awesome. Mm. 
and nothing better than so, seeing the uh, cattle sheds in the background of Ballarat Showgrounds just over the back. I think there's a few things better. Instead of playing this game, should Bevo and Kingsley just had an arm wrestle? That's what I said, actually, to my mates when I was watching it. I said this in the group chat. You guys oh. should be friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either way. That would have been cool. How do we sort of – it's weird to read into this game, right? Because I think J- it's like windy as all hell. It's windier than your mum after, I don't know, just – Getting around a bit of cucumber. I think that's what the old what, what is wrong what with you? I think she gets, gets a bit farty after the cucumber. That's cabbage, you Cucu- idiot. No one. No, no, I reckon just anyway. Cucumber. Cucumber works. Cabbage is a very farty. This is why we just got cancelled. I, I don't know about that. But you look at this, it's so windy. You can't look at this game and go, oh, well, that'll just transfer to like when the dogs play the Hawks. But no, it's more that the or Bulldogs, the GWS when they play Bulldogs had to win to guarantee themselves finals. GWS had top four locked up. And we're like, if we lose, we actually don't need to leave Sydney. Pretty good. Yeah. I'll pay that. Just when it bucketed down as well, you're just like, oh. I think gross. I think Bevo our coach Kingsley, though, in the third 100%. quarter, it was like, keep it on the dead wing. Yeah, and they yeah. just did. Um, and then you just had in moments where they needed a bit of skill and class, you saw Bontempelli, Richards, Norton popped up with a mark. Well, that Richards goal at the start of the fourth, yeah. wasn't it? It was like yeah. where he roosted. He's been fantastic. Toby Richards. Green snagged that goal at the end of the third. You're like, yeah. ooh, here we go. And uh, the tsunami never really engaged. Nah. So. Would have been a weird one to have a tsunami on Lake Wendery. Just saying. Yeah. Fan bases? Dogs fans would be heartened but wary. They're happy they made the finals. Yeah. Mm. I think they understand how tough that Hawks team is going to be. Yeah. GWS fans, I think they're looking at this going, Don't have to leave Sydney. Fine, we can give Sydney a crack. That's sweet. Yeah. Uh, so the SCG, what night was that going to be? Friday? Apparently it's Saturday now. Saturday night. Has it been confirmed? Uh, well, a certain betting agency has gone early and has put out the <laughs> dates and times, which, again, they could change. Sure. So, and Dan's actually put it in the chat here. Nice one. Oh, <laughs> cop that, Jim. Orange team ironically hate Rangers. I don't know about that. They've got a couple. Do they? Tom Green. Mm. Ranger. A couple mm. of other ones. Anyway, should be right. Sure. <laughs> I believe. Uh, so that ends up like a pretty crazy, like, dog's year. They make the top eight again. It's a successful year. If they lose in the elimination final, though, oh. Mm. Like, everyone's taking the victory, the Bevo victory lap now. If they lose to the Hawks, it's going to get very weird and wonky very quickly. GWS, if they go out in straight sets, they'd be weird. If they make a prelim, can they make a grand final? Yes. Yes. They're top four. Hey, Carlton lost to St Kilda, 76 to 74. Didn't matter. <laughs> I was never worried. Didn't didn't care about that game. That that game was bad. The finish was great. Fini- one of the best the finishes. The skills were pathetic. You could say that about quite literally every St. Kilda game this year, I think. I watched them against Geelong last week. They were pretty bloody good. They were good for the second half. Yeah. The switcher, like that first half was horrible. But this game itself, I mean, when they were sort of going back and forth in that third quarter, you go, oh, yes, Carlton don't have a forward line. This is fantastic. Uh, Jesse Motlop kicks one goal and does very little else in this game. It's an important goal. And it was a very important goal. It didn't eventually end up mattering, but still – the Saints, the Jack Higgins goal was sick. Dan Butler's a dog. Uh, what else can we say? <laughs> Rowan Dan- Marshall's a weapon. He tout, like he and Pitto just had a big boy fight, I reckon, all day. <laughs> but Rowan Marshall in the clinches, it's just it's hilarious to watch. I love Pitto. But those moments of like on the ground agility and just like getting those extra disposals out of absolutely nothing, Pitto just does like it's like watching just like it's the uh, X-Men meme of like uh Wolverine sitting there looking at the picture, and I'm yeah. Wolverine. I'm looking at a picture of Tom DeCone. Just like <laughs> just missing him. I just miss him because Pito, he's serviceable. He's big. Good yeah. depth. Jeez. So also pretty funny to see Liam Stocker and Paddy Dow go hammer and tongs against the Blues. <laughs> yeah. That did not suck at all. So. Nick Newman, I thought was pretty good. Yeah, he had like one million he touches yeah. in the second most amount of marks this season in a game. Really, seventeen, I think. So. Uh, uh, Ollie Hollands in the last quarter was just seemingly everywhere. That's like the best game of football Ollie Hollands yeah. has played, yeah. I think. Uh, probably one of the most complete. He played a really good one a couple of weeks ago too, but mm. uh, he was really, really good this week. And that's, to be honest, we're going to talk about how the fan base is feeling. Carlton fans will be like, Ollie Hollands, he can, if he can actually figure out how to play football, that's awesome. 
be really good if his brother did something else other than pop up every so often yeah. on half half forward flank and just. I enjoyed the Pooh's game for St Kilda. Pooh was good. Missed that goal though. Dow was fantastic. God, Dow was good. <laughs> That's so annoying. Anyway, uh, how did Carlton fans feel about Sam Walsh, Jim? So Sam Walsh is a, he's an enigma. <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> rude, Daniel Brown. That is Pitto just to TDK as Aaron Francis is to McCartan. Walsh, Walsh is an enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in just like a old box of dirty tissues or something. Like It's weird. Mm. Pitto is like a fusion of weedering and a big slab of more than humans. <laughs> he is. He really is. He just doesn't do anything, though. Like Even when they kick it down long to him on the line, it's like take a mark once. Just once. Yep. When he does it, you're like, that was awesome. Just do it again. Anyway, uh, Sam Walsh continues to be a bugbear. It's just I feel like he's still carrying the crummy back injury that he had early on this season, and it might never have gotten that good, but he's powered through it. But still, hit a target. Like one mm. lead-up target. That's all I ask. Saints fans are going to be like, that was awesome. We almost played spoiler. Sucked in blues. And to that I say, enjoy 12th and not being in the finals. And then finally, Frio lost to... Never there is a ball. Boom, 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 boom. The Port Adelaide Power. What was the actual final score? 87-67. 87-67. Weird game. Frio just never could wrestle control of it. They pushed hard in the at the start of the last, but just could not take their chances. Not having Tracy, not having Darcy, not having Pierce. It's a hell of a spine to be missing. They lost their last four. That's some good analysis. I mean, they did lose their <laughs> last four. All right, let's end the show. <laughs> Point proved. See us. <laughs> Don't lose your last four. You play finals. Win one of the games. The game you lost out. Like the Essendon game was absolutely unforgivable. Uh Losing the, ju- the West Coast in the season. Yeah, well, if, is just that, if the Essendon, if Essendon didn't get that point, the Durham point, are they in finals? Yes, because of the draw. That's crazy. That center clearance Amazing. was awfully defended, and right. it's cost them. <laughs> Outside of this, I mean, the power getting through this the way they did. I loved this. I mean, for obvious reasons, they got the Blues in the finals. For them to sort of go, we don't really have too much to play for, but they're just like that angry. This happened like oh, two no, weeks ago. Oh, no, this was to well. guarantee a home final too. They had to, well, they had to make sure they didn't lose by a lot. Yeah. And they'd be fine. Four goals. Yes. But still, like, they came out, they fought, they were really good. I just really, really, really like this power team at times. Mm. They do this to you. They suck you in. And then they might just go straight I, I'm sets. not going to believe like, it till they lift lift the cup. Yeah, win a final. Yeah. And then we'll start talking, I think. Um I think Butters was everywhere, throwing himself into every contest. Butters, Rosie showed up a little bit in the second half too. Hornet was fantastic, I thought. Um, as we were sitting here watching it, it's just like every time there was like a big sort of moment to be had, yeah. he grasped it. It, was it wasn't really cool. a good time for Caleb Sarong to have his worst game of the year. Caleb Sarong, Sarong. Three behinds and 19 touches. All right, mm. two fan bases. How are they feeling after that? Power just like stoked. Yep. They were fired, Ken, yeah. halfway through the season. Frio fans are flatter than anything. They can't believe they've missed the finals from this position. So, like, this is the team that when they beat this one, the best like, defense in the AFL this season, basically, right? Until yeah. probably today, just statistically, they might have actually just slipped off the perch, but they were for most of this season. Yeah, yeah. And to have that and to not make the finals is absolutely absurd. So, uh, Port Adelaide are the best defense by three points. Yeah, to Frio, or? to Frio, and then to St Kilda and Sydney. Yep, not Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> who I think might have ended up 16. Crazy that two of the top four defenses aren't in finals. That's yeah. what. Mm-hmm. Defense is overrated. You heard it here first on AFL Today. That's why like North that. Ball is the future. All right, tipping results after all this. Uh, I actually have no idea how I went. I think I got it? eight. I got Richmond wrong. Oh, no. I got seven. I got three hour wrong. Yeah, too. I got six. I think you got f- six or five. That sounds right. Looks like judging by this. I don't know. You got nine, Jim. Nine. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm the greatest tipper who ever lived. Uh, the funniest outcomes, though, I think that we were talking about, right? It was um, Essendon winning, which would have been hilarious because Brisbane would have absolutely cooked it. Uh, probably the dogs remaining the line of demarcation and losing, that would have been hilarious. Uh, Carlton, obviously, losing was funny. <laughs> if you weren't me, God damn it. <clears throat> and there you go. Uh, but full credit to the boys. Best team of the round for me, it was the Western Bulldogs. How is it not free, uh, Port Adelaide for winning well, I'm saying the now it's Port. Like it yeah. was, I wrote this down before Port won. Now it's Port. The way they went out there and just, I don't know, took the hopes and dreams of a nation on their shoulders and did right by the universe and got Carlton into the finals. 
Uh, but the dogs are fantastic. I thought mm. the way that they yep. just clamped out the uh, the Giants was awesome. And, uh, yeah, but the power, taking care of Frio at home. Very, very, very good. Alex? I'm just going to go Hawthorne. That was awesome. In those on. disgusting conditions to still kick 150 points. Ridiculous. It's a very tough week to give best. Yeah, I had that, I'm just like, this, this sucks. Yeah. yeah. You know, Hawthorne were awesome in the wet and terrible conditions and won by 120. Let's go, Hawthorne. Leo? Well, I was going to say Hawthorne. So, oh, sorry. Uh, I'll go Geelong. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Checks out. We're just smashing teams. Uh, best on ground of the week. Who was the best player we saw this week? So there were moments where Cripps uh, showed some flashes. In the third quarter, he was massive. Uh, I enjoyed that a lot. But also, there were just times where you're like, Patrick, when you put your hands above your head, he's got a bung shoulder and he's carrying like a – Yeah, he was carrying a Heavily stinger. taped, isn't it? And it's like – I understand that it's going to be – but when the ball is like going through you and hitting you on the head, that's weird. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to give this to Lockie Neal. He was absolutely yep. fantastic on Saturday night. He was just absolutely everywhere and dominated. Like there was a moment, I think – I don't know how many touches he got to because I was going to throw Dacos in here as well, but the way that Lockie Neal we, – we literally talked this one out before, right, about how uh, – who would you take in terms of like their career, et cetera? And how well they've done. And Lockie Neal sort of sits a little bit below, but he was so good against the uh, bruise-free Dons that it was a bit ridiculous. He ended up with 40 touches and a goal. Mm. And there was like moments in that third and fourth quarter where there's like little scare of fight from the Bombers. And he went, all right, I'll just get in the guts again. Mm. Bang, off he went. Bang, off he went. So that was really, really impressive, I thought. And Dacos, obviously, 40 and two. That's probably three votes. Alex. Jezza. It was awesome. Just it was talent honestly, awesome. yeah. Like I know he wasn't on a good defender, but that was just awesome to watch. Yeah, I was going to go Dacos, but you already shouted him out. I'm going to go a bit different. I'm going to say Ollie Wines in the Port game. 31 disposals, six clearances. I thought he played a great uh, game and defensively too. He didn't let Sarong get – I know Drew was also on Sarong, but Wines too I thought played Jack Higgins. Well. <laughs> it's pretty good. And Jim's left the show. <laughs> <laughs> just Funniest there. result. As Absolutely. I said in the group chat at 508, uh, Jezza, yeah, that. Thank you, Max Hansen. Yeah, Jezza so had seven goals with seven I kicks. I think he had six goals with six kicks, joining the exclusive club with John Butcher. Yeah, the guy from John Port Adelaide. John Butcher. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Amazing. my God. That is a that name. That was so I've cool. Such a grab. Anyway, uh, stat of the week via Stats Boy. But I already not stole Stats it. Boy. Uh, this has already been said. Without Sheasel in 2024, North and their average losing result is over 100 points. That is not good. Not ideal. No. One dude and you're losing by 100. It's just not great. Just not great. Anyway, keep it up, North. You're doing fantastic. Clarko will fix it. Uh, oh, mate, no mates. Who's got no mates this week? The Lions and the Umps. There were some shocking ones this week. Uh, it felt, I mean, it didn't matter. Like No. And then you saw the Umps as well in that Carlton St. Kilda game where everyone was just ropeable. But it was particularly egregious, I thought, in the Lions game. It was like... Faintly ridiculous at times. You're like, what? Mm. What are we doing? Oh, that's silly. There was a particular, I think, of a Joe Danaher arm chop. And it's like, well, that is beat a free kick all year. I don't get why that's not a free kick. He probably would have missed it anyway, but still. Probably. Uh, and then the other old mate nomads, though, in the very spirit of the uh, old mate nomads, is get on the bus and go, what the hell was that? The Ben Mackay handball that led, he handballed it to the Lions. Be more specific. He handballed it to the Lions player and they kicked a goal. He's done that probably more. He did that more. last week as well. <laughs> what has what what Ben, like, does he get back on the Bombers team bus? They're like, other bus, Ben. Ben, <laughs> ben wrong bus, mate. What are it's you like, doing? Oh, you guys are my teammates. He's like, wait. Oh. S and Den? Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Jeez. Not great. Ben McKay is also now getting to the point where commentators are feeling free to criticize him and that's mm. not a great spot to be in. Like, when commentators are just like, what's up? Yeah. And yeah, we're about to get to that one, Daniel. So, Alex. Uh, yeah, the knob who threw the water bottle at the goal umpire and hit him in the back of the head. Yep. Yeah, that is legitimate old mate. No, mates, you deserve to never go to the football again. I hope you get a humongous fine as well because that – you can yell at the umpires for bad decisions and be frustrated, but without umpires, we don't have a game. Stuff like that discourages the future umpires from going through. Once again, without them, we don't have a game. Pull your head in. As I said during the live stream – we all get angry. We all get frustrated. But we don't throw things because we're not children. What are you doing? When my two-year-old is just like, hey, Dad, check this, and just goes, whomp, and I'm like, what are you doing? Don't do that. 
and then I ban him from life. I just ban him for life from the lounge room or whatever. No more TV for you, goofball. That's why you got rid of Paramount Plus? Yeah, Paramount Plus is gone. <laughs> no more Paw Patrol. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, don't throw things. Like, it's just, it's a very basic sort of civilized tenant. Mm. Don't throw things at people. You're not children. Leo. I'm just going to go with Brody Kemp. Because he, oh. he missed an easy <laughs> shot. And even though you're in finals, he's probably now going to the boys, yeah, we're in finals. We're and they were like, Brody, you could have just done yeah. it for us earlier. Yeah. Like, So yeah. I'm just going to say Brody Camp. That's a great one. I'll pay that. Why I can't stand, I mentioned this earlier, board commentators are just brutal. Like when it's good, it's great. Like commentators can lift the game when they're just like not engaged and pretty bored and sort of just chatting amongst themselves. Sometimes that can be kind of fun, but when they're not particularly engaging personalities, I'm looking at you, I don't know, Nick Del Santo, uh, it's just brutal. Like mm. you just seem to go, why are you talking even? What are we doing? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Alex. Uh, I'm going to go with, oh, it'll be sad if the best team in the comp doesn't make the finals. That was being said about the Western Bulldogs potentially today if they lost. Well, if you don't make the finals, you are not the best team in the competition. Technically speaking right now, the best team in the competition is the Sydney Swans. <laughs> Why? They are first on the ladder and minor premiers. Right now, they are the best. Come the end of the season, the Premier will be the best. Also, oh, that free kick and non-50 cost us finals. Collingwood fans, just shut up. You weren't you good to, enough. You don't have to listen to them for the next month. I know. Or even longer now. So. Oh, six, no, they're, six they're, 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 they were trying to dine out on Carlton for a couple of hours, so I'm actually kind of happy that Carlton have made finals now. It's pretty funny. Yeah. It's, to be honest, it would have been – it was going to be bad no matter what. Yeah. And losing that one after losing to Collingwood two years ago by a point, to lose to St Kilda by two points and miss finals again, just would have been brutal. Yeah. yeah. We'd love to see MLB-style team-specific comms commentators teams one day. I think that's what we're getting towards. I think that's what I love the idea of the Hawks radio, well, the Blues radio. Yeah, Blues radio. I really I enjoy that. I mean, I don't listen to it because it's even too nuffy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to live like – I don't want to live and die with the commentators you, the same sort of way. You don't want to listen like, to uh, Mark McClure telling Husey to shut up. It's like <laughs> sometimes it gets too nuffy and I'm just like, I like oh, that's already happening in my head. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't need that externalized, so, if that makes sense. Can I give you the alleged finals fixture? Uh, how about we get through this bit and then you can do that. We'll finish the segment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> Leo, uh, what can't you stand? Oh, mine's very basic. I thought this week was heavily over, over umpired. The Hawks North game, there were so many frees. Oof. I'm not saying it favored any side. It was bad to both teams. I thought today was overly umpired too. Um, in every game, I thought the Dogs Giants game as well. I just think they need to simplify. I think finals coming up, it will be simplified because that's just what they do and they pay less frees. But I thought it was pretty poor this round. Another shout out to Razor Ray as well on the yeah, weekend. Yeah, shout out Razor Ray. Had his, uh, had his final, <laughs> final game. That was very, very cool. He also had a. Uh, he, he was almost delighting. I think he got to pay a deliberate one more time. Yeah, oh, that was a shocking deliberate. Was awesome. Did you see when he got sent off, there was a Pies fan in the background giving him the uh, middle finger? <laughs> Fair. And, and I think Razor just had like a little <laughs> smile, a little word That's to fantastic. him. That's fantastic. Getting into it. Ah, it's good. Anyway, uh, let's do better than Harley Reid and then we'll look at this finals fixture as it stands. So better than Harley Reid for this week. He wasn't that bad. I, 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 yeah. I wonder who did this. Yeah, I totally did this because no one else had done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holly Hollands. There we go. Let's go. He's better than Holly Reid. Big Watson, three goals. Caden yeah. <laughs> Cleary says the Swans fan. Yeah. There you go. Good yeah. Job. Where was Caden Cleary? He was very good against Essendon, I thought. And he, uh, he was, I didn't watch the Saturday one, but. He uh, was even better last, last week, night. Yeah. Two huge mothers that led to goals. He had 16 touches and a couple of tackles, and I think he had about four clearances as well. Got midfield time in the last quarter when everyone else was off. It's like, oh, he's going to be that dude next year. It's just like in every week. Like, oh, yeah. Caden Cleary's good. How about Will Ashcroft? People have forgotten about it. We him, already knew he was better. 30 disposals. He's fantastic. We already knew that, though. Do we, though? Like, he's coming up from an ACL. So watching that one, it's like the yeah. first time I've seen him just go, oh, I'm like one of the best dudes on this team. He again. did it in Jamie that said. first quarter against the Giants um, and then did nothing. And yeah. just for a little bit of reference, so with the – as a, as we sort of hit on the Ollie Holland stuff, he was just – I don't know. We, all we talk about with Carlton is, oh, we need more speed, more speed. He's got the speed. It's like, do you know how to play footy though? And he's sort of slowly figuring it out. He had 21 touches today, 16. Feels so rude, be like, 16 on, do you know how to play footy? Handles, he's on the list. <laughs> yeah, but still. Learn how to IQ. kick a ball. Footy IQ, isn't it? All right. 
What do these finals look like, Alex? So this has changed a bunch of times, but allegedly as of right now, Thursday night, Port Adelaide played Geelong. Yep. Friday night, Western Bulldogs and Hawthorne hate that. On a Friday night? Hate that. Ooh, no, I don't mind that. No. Saturday afternoon, Swans and Giants. Saturday night, Brisbane and Carlton. I would flip the Friday and the Saturday because I think the Saturday afternoon of the MCG will get the absolute biggest crowd. It probably would. Swans and Giants on a Friday night works as but well. But from a Hawks perspective, we have not had a Friday night game in New York. Who gives a crap? I it's want finals. a Friday night You get a Friday game. night That'd game if you Scrubbo make the next week. he used to play footy with Ray as a kid. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, if Caden even develops into 75% of Errol or chat, Swans have another gun. That's yes. pretty fair. More like 20%. Lewis Malikin. Because he's like Pac Man and goes nom 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 on defenders. Good, good stuff, Johnny. Uh, I, so I I don't I if we can swap the Friday and the Saturday afternoon, I'm happy with that lineup. Apparently, it's going to be confirmed tomorrow morning. Fox why? 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 Well, they usually confirmed f- on Monday morning. Oh, they'll just float this out and see what happens. Oh, uh, at the moment, looks like Porter nine and a half point favorites against Geelong. Uh, the Dogs are three and a half point favorites against Hawthorne. Sydney is seven and a half point favorites against GWS. Yeah. And Brisbane. the Lions are 20 and a half points. 20. Right. Right. Oh. Quick tips. Port, Port and Geelong. Uh, I'd probably still say... <sighs> if, Geelong. Judging from Port's record against them in finals, yeah, probably Port. I'm going to go Geelong. 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 Uh, dogs and Hawthorne? Dogs. Hawks. I think it's Hawks. Thanks, Sw- lads. Swans, Giants? Swans. Swans. And we're all tipping Brisbane. Da, 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 let's go. <laughs> we're winning the flag, boys. <laughs> Sucked you in. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Super coach Wash. Nick Dacos. Do oh we know God. who, if our man actually won the entire comp is the big question. Uh, the final rankings for the year. Kiddie's crew was 144 up. Uh, doesn't look like that's updated yet for whoever won, but hopefully he won the 50 grand. It was a good chat on the Super coach show, which is very fun. They did have some big points of difference, though, this week. So it'd be interesting to see how they landed. Anyway, that'd be very, very fun and very cool. Uh, I don't know where I finished with the old... Uh, I had five donuts this week. It was I cool. I got 2,499. I think I had 2,000... Ooh, 2,252. Gross. I uh, Captain Bontempelli and forgot about it. Nice one. All right, well, that is it for the final Home and Away. Home and Away. Round 24 wrap episode of AFL today. Uh, what we will be doing, though, yes. the cool thing is we've got plenty in the can ready to go, you see. We've got two weeks' worth of stuff before the next game. Uh, so we will have the AFL Today Awards mm-hmm. this week. We will have the wrap-up of the 10 teams who did not make it. We'll be previewing all these teams. We'll be talking all this other stuff as well. We have so much in the works. It's a bit ridiculous. We'll have the All-Australian teams Naming our going own. out. What's Naming that? our own all Australian teams. Yes, yep. as we discussed on the live stream, it was fun. Mm. We talked it out. It was like a work meeting. Nah. Anyway, so we have plenty in store for you this week. AFLW starts this weekend as well. Check out the AFLW Today Show. Check we have. Uh, we are recording Tuesday for the round one preview. Maddie Collier from the Sydney Swans will nice. be joining the show. Very awesome. cool. So remember to smash us, you know, across the socials and on YouTube. Uh, for the AFL Today Show, all the way through the finals. We have actually got, like, I think five, pr- basically, shows between now and the start of the finals, and they're going to be chockers. We're not going to run out stuff. of content. We're going to have top fives. We've got all this other stuff. It's going to be unreal. Uh, so get around that on YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X, all the good stuff. And, of course, AFLW Today, AFL Today, Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, which kicks off again this week. And hold all tickets. Plenty of stuff Hold all there. tickets back this Thursday for the Group 1 Memsey Stakes Thursday. at Caulfield. Ooh. There you go. Yep. And AFLW season previews are out now. Nice. All NFL teams. Australia will have the over-unders and all of your picks heading into this season. All your awards and all that stuff. Nice. All that stuff, rather. Oh, yeah. Swear right at the end. <laughs> Good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> we'll catch you later this week for an absolute shockers, shockers set of AFL Today gear. Get around them like the Swans, getting around another minor premiership for being the best team we've seen in 150 years. There's no possible way they could lose before this grand final. All right, we'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. We've got so much in the can, it's ridiculous. Till then, look after yourselves and remember, footy was back. It's still back because now it's footy finals. <laughs> da 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 da! Got the baggies! Woo! Peace.